Assalamualaikum, Namaste, Hello, and welcome to the 14th session of the National Workshop on Aesthetics titled Soundarya and Sahrudaya Aesthetic Discourses in India and the World, organized by Pad Sala with Sri Sangrajarya University of Sanskrit Kaladi as an institutional partner and Sahapedia as our outreach partner. A warm good morning to one and all. My name is Manu and I am the coordinator of this event and a research scholar at the University of Calicut, Kerala and the alumni of the Department of English, Sri Sangrajarya University of Sanskrit, Kalan. Today, we are glad to have Professor Dr. Nirmal Silvamani to give us an introduction on Tinai theory. Professor Dr. Nirmal Silvamani is the former head of the Department of English Studies and the Dean of the School of Social Sciences and Humanities in the Central University of Tamil Nadu. He introduced the course Eco-Criticism in the Indian University System and found a forum now known as Tinai, which was formerly known as Osle India, and also a journal entitled Indian Journal of Eco-Criticism to promote this course. He was also instrumental in introducing the first ever courses, Tamil Musicology and Music and Literature in the University of Madras, conceptualized and introduced Tinai or Ecoregional Musicology that studies the music of primordial bio biomic world regions. He revived the tradition of Indian philosophical tradition called Tachi, which uh, precedes the Darshanas. He had been trained in Rudangam, Jazz, Violin, and Carnatic music and studied Tolkapiyam. Tolkapiyam, Tamil music and Tamil grammar under the tutelage of late Dr. V.P. V. P. K. Sundaram, a renowned musicologist, Tamil scholar and student of Navalar Soma Sundar Bharati. He had been an invited lecturer and a visiting faculty in several universities around the globe. He has done several musical compositions and made his contributions to theater and performance too, apart from the long list of publications and translations. In 2011, he was awarded Lifetime Achievement Award by Northeast Ohio Tamil Sangham, Ohio, US. He was awarded with for the best monograph by International School of Dravidian Linguistics for the book Persona in Tolka PM. Today, we are indeed fortunate to have with us this multifaceted genius as an artist come academician. Sir, we are indeed honored to have you with us. And let me also take this opportunity to seek forgiveness for having wrongly stated the designation in the initial schedule that was circulated without the specification that you are the former head and the dean at Central University of Tamil Nadu. So on behalf of all the organizers and participants, I extend a hearty welcome to you. Over to you, sir. Sir, please unmute that mic, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Manu. Uh, that was a very generous introduction. And don't worry about, you know, the uh, small, you know, things that happen when we organize events like this. Um, so, uh, thanks a lot to the organizers, uh, uh, Sankaracharya University, uh, Padasala, uh, a unit in that university, and also Sahapedia, which who organized this event. Thank you very much. And also thanks for all the participants for taking time to be part of this discussion. So as uh, Mr. Manu told you, this is going to be just an introduction to Tinai theory, probably, which you all know uh, quite a bit, but then somehow, you know, I was asked to do that. So I, I thought I would anyway uh, do it. Uh, first, I would just want to start with a song from Sangam, uh, what is called Sangam literature. This is uh, the um, collection of songs called Kurundoge. This is the first song in that anthology. And that song reads, Engalam padak kundra avunar teita chengol ambim chengotu yane kalal todi chei kundram kurudi puvin kulai kandate chengalam padak kundra avunar teita chengol ambim chengotu yane 
கழல்தொடி செய் குன்றம் குருதி பூவின் குலை காந்தட்டே ஏ கே ராமானுஜன் டிரான்ஸ்லேட்டட் song and here is his translation red is the battlefield as he crushes the demons red his arrow shafts red the tusks tusks of his elephants audio has gone up yes um chengalam padakkondru avunadeythu chengolam bin chengottu yane kadal todiche kundum kadal todiche kundum kurudi poovin kulai kaandatte குருதிக்கல் மோட் தட் இஸ் ரெலவென்ட் டு தட் திணை அண்ட் திஸ் சாங் is in kurunji pan or the musical mode called kurunji pan so i try to kind of okay. um you know set this song in that mode now what this song says is very simple it's just a statement which might go be like something like this in the hill of che abound fire lilies are kandal in other words there are plenty of kandal flowers in the hill of che now how does this become poetic what is the poetic significance of this statement who speaks and to whom what is the context of this uh statement a factual one at that could we interpret this song using the poetic device of suggestion what does the statement suggest is this a song meant to afford aesthetic pleasure by evoking a scene of red objects like the red arrow shafts the red elephant the tusk of the elephant um the red one the red hill because it's covered with red kandal flowers or is it a eulogy of a valorous uh, a hero and in this case che could we say that uh, nature also endorses the valor of che by producing blood red flowers and covering the entire hill with those flowers to match the a uh, red battlefield of che but also declare the glory of che che in, in its own way on the other hand if you are thinking of you know eroticism if that is the poetic device you want to use could we say that the speaker is a lover who expresses the greatness of the valor of her warrior lover by pointing out the fact that the hill also admires the warrior by covering the hill with blood red flowers now all of these interpretations will be fine if the scene is not part of a whole drama if this is just a self contained unit but this song narrates a scene in the life of a society called tinai and the life of this society is divided into two uh, divisions aham and puram as we know very loosely 
translated, you know, aham could be home life and puram is life outside home, very simply speak. Simply, I mean, if you put it very simply. The home and the space outside home are part of the system called Trinay, which includes the land and all that that land supports, what we call nature, of which human beings are also a part. As humans are a part of nature, their culture is also a part of this larger system called Tine. In fact, according to Tolgapian, the entire Earth's surface is divisible into four land areas. The scrub land, the mountainous land, riverine plains, and the sea coast. And traditionally, we also add a fifth, which is the arid land, when part of the hill or the scrubland turns arid, that is another category of land area. And each land area is home to several organisms, including humans, whose culture is also supported by this land area. The Tine theory outlined in Tolgapium and the Tine songs, like the song I just now, you know, read out and sang to you, uh, so that theory tells us all about, you know, all the details we know, need to know about uh, Tine. So this theory tells us which land area is associated with which natural cultural features and with which primary action that pertains to a particular Tine. For example, we see the mountainous land area at the night time. So night is the time associated with the mountainous land and in the cold season of the year. And this land area is home to such natural features as uh, animals, birds, plants. Talking about animals, you know, we find elephants like the one that was mentioned in the song or monkeys, birds such as parakeets and pea fowls plants such as Puringi, which the song mentioned. Um, I mean, which the song did not mention. Um, it mentioned Kandir, or botanically called Glorious or Superba, or Fire Lilies, or Glory Lilies, or whatever. And also trees like Venge. So all of these natural features are usually associated with the mountains. Plants. And there are cultural fe features associated with the Tine. Eh? like the food uh, made of millet and honey, the drum like tondagam, and the major occupations that are associated with the tine would be hunting or honey gathering. And the musical mode is Kurinji Pan, uh, which today we call Nada Bhairavi, and those, those pitches correspond to the pitches of Kurinji Pan. And the song I sang to you was based on that. And the appropriate action that goes with, you know, this mountainous land area is the meeting of lovers and their union. So each of the five Tinegar, Mullai, Kurinji, Pali, Maradam, and Nagal has its corresponding uh, land area, natural cultural features, and also primary action. And as the songs are based on these details, we need to read the songs in the light of these. Also, there's one other thing that we need to keep in mind, the personae. The primary action for each tune is that of the central personae called Kirati and Kiravan. And there are other personae, personae who are around them. And we need to know about their relationships in what kind of relationship one persona stands you know, to the other. And which persona could be speakers and which cannot be. And in which context you know, could each one of them speak and listen. And when they speak, what they are likely to speak, the context, so on. Now let us take the song that we just now you know, saw. Uh, before we ask the question, you know, who speaks to whom in this song? Uh, that song. Uh, 
uh, we'll have to identify the land area of that song, the time of action, the natural cultural features, and the primary action. Uh, there are two place related terms in the song, Kalam and Kundram. Okay. Kalam here refers to the battlefield. It has several meanings, but in this song, you know, the term Chengaram, a battlefield turned ruddy because of the battle. And Kundram or the hill. So from, you know, this information, we, we probably infer that this is a hilly area. So from that, we can also guess that this song, you know, belongs to Kurunji Tine. Now, what about time? The song does not mention the time at all. So that's a possibility. Songs need not mention all of the details, you know, that we are looking for. The natural features mentioned are the elephant and the flower kandar or gloriosa superba. Now, what about the primary action? The song mentions battle, but is that the primary action? The battle between Che and his opponents called Awunar. Now, if you read carefully, we will know that the battle is part of the description of the hill itself. So the primary action is not that, it's something else. It's what the speaker tells the listener, that there are plenty of candle flowers in the hill of Che. By itself, what the speaker says is only a statement, which does not count as the prescribed primary action that we are looking for in a tine. So in order to read the song as one about Kurinji Tine, we need to know the Tine conventions that go with Kurinji Tine and the Tine song in general. So without the repertoire of conventions, the distance between the text, what the text says and what it actually means will remain an unbridgeable chasm. So even if you know that is a song about agatine or, you know, eroticism, and in this case, Kurinji, we may not really arrive at the relevant Tine convention that operates in the text. For example, we know that the song provides information about the availability of candle flowers in the hill of Che. The confidante tells the male lover where these flowers are available. Now she says that they are available in the hill of Che. So with this information, if we apply the device of suggestion, what you call dwani, we may speculate that the lover is expected to bring these flowers to his beloved who desires to have them. Now, is that the suggested idea that you can infer from the text? Such speculative interpretations need not work actually in tenai based texts. In other words, Ingenious speculation is not the proper hermeneutic method in a Tine song. Familiarity with Tine conventions and the application of the relevant convention in a particular song will only work in the case of Tine songs. Even poetic devices like uh, Meipadu or Rasa or suggestion um, like, you know, uh, Kuripu or uh, other what you call alamkara in Sanskrit, you know, poetic devices. All of those are no substitutes for the knowledge of Tine conventions. They are all of secondary importance. The primary poetic device in Tine is a set of conventions, Tine conventions. So it's a co quite common knowledge that, you know, these conventions, Tine conventions are found only in early Tamil texts like Tolgapiyam and the application of those conventions in what you call the Tine songs. So uh, from the uh, theory of Tine outlined in Tine, those, all those verses, you know, which talk about these conventions, we learn that the hillside is the place where the lovers meet and fall in love with each other. The lovers meet in different trysts in this location, 
often with the help of the confidante, the female friend of the uh, of Kirti, of the uh, female central persona. It is sh this confidante who regulates these meetings. Sometimes she permits the male lover to meet her friend, but at other times she simply turns him away. When the male lover comes to meet her, his lover, he sometimes brings a gift or two to be given to his girlfriend, but he cannot give the gift to her. He will have to get the confidante's consent. And when um, the confidante rejects a gift, she does so on one pretext or the other. Now the song under discussion is about such a context, the rejection of the male lover's gift of candle flowers. The confidante turns the hero, I mean, the male lover away by telling him that there are plenty of such flowers in the hill of Kirati where the divine being Che resides. The deity Che is mentioned because Che is the principal deity of Kurinjitine. The phrase Che Kundram shows that the mountain is sacred because the deity resides in that mountain. Such a sacred mountain is also worshipable. We find a similar relationship between the sacred mountain and the primal people among the Mudugar community of Atta Party in the Western Ghats uh, or the Dongria Kons uh, who live in the Niamagri of uh, Odisha state. So only by applying you know, the Tine conventions can we know who speaks to whom and in which context. So in this, con in this particular song, the confidante speaks to the male lover when he brings these flowers as gift to be given to his girlfriend. So let us look at the Tinegar which pertain to the two domains of life that I mentioned, Aham and Puram. To Aham uh, belong uh, Kaikirai, Kurinji, Mulle, Marudum, Naidal, Pali, and Perundine. To Puram, Padan, Vetchi, Banji, Urinye, Tumbai, Vage, and Kanji. So among these Tinegar, there are some that are not land-based. Kaikile and Perundine and Padan and Banji, they are not based on land. So we focus uh, on the five that are land-based for our discussion. Particularly, we focus on the mountainous Kurinji Tine. Uh, Kaikile, uh, the uh, non-land-based Tine, is all about unrequited heterosexual passion. And its Puram counterpart, Pardon, is about you know, singing the praises of the chieftain or the ruler. And Kurinji, I told you, it's a Tine about the meeting of lovers. And its Puram counterpart, Vetchi, is uh, a Puram uh, Tine where the combat is initiated. And Mulle, is another Agam, is all about uh, a family dwelling as a, uh, at home in this Tine. And its Puram counterpart, Banji, is about the uh, opposing of the opponent, challenging the opponent. And Nabal is about the pining of the female. Uh, central persona, and Tumba is about weakening the opponent in the combat. And Pali is about separation, temporary separation, and Bhage, its firm counterpart, about victory in the combat. And Perundine, which is again not a land-based Agam Dine, is about incompatible passion. And its firm counterpart, Kanji, is about the transience of life. Now, scholars have debated about the names of Tinegar. So on what basis is each Tine named? Is the Tine named after plants or after conduct? 
some actually have plant names like um, Kurinji, Mullai, Marudam, Naidal, Pale, and so on. But names like Kaikilai, Perundinai, Padan are not plant names. And when the name is the name of a plant, we find that that is the typical you know, plant of flower in that particular land area. And when the name is of the conduct, and that is the uh, characteristic conduct of that tine. So there are three major constituents of tine, as we have seen, place time or what they call mudal, the natural cultural features are called karu, and the primary action or uripur. So what is this thinne? Like, how do we understand what this thinne is? How do, you, how do you define it as an entity? Obviously, um, it's a form of society. Actually, um, for a long time, you know, people, scholars used to think that it was a kind of um, literary device. I mean, of course, um, scholars knew that it was a social order, but then there were... Um, Many, many scholars, you know, took it as simply as a kind of literary device in early Tamil songs. But it's actually a form of society that preceded the state society, <clears throat> which integrated the humans with nature and supernature in such a way that the human impact on the planet was not really detrimental either to humans or to nature or to supernature is so a kind of very harmonious relationship, you know, among these. So it's that kind of a society. That's what Tene is all about. And it's comparable to what scientists would call the biome. And scholars have, uh, scientists have um, schematized the entire Earth's surface into different biomes. And they identify five basic biomes, the aquatic, grassland, forest, uh, desert and the tundra. Um, and these are based on vegetation, soil, climate, uh, wildlife, sometimes all of these together or sometimes just on the basis of one or two of these. But biome and pine are not one and the same. The major difference is that biomes, you know, do not really specify which human communities would go with which biome whereas Tine does. So we know a particular human community resides in a particular Tine. So these uh, people are called Tine pair. For example, in the mountain uh, Tine, that Kurinji Tine that we are talking about, uh, the people are Kurava. So each Tine has its uh, human communities and it also has uh, various personae uh, called Tine Nilai pair. Um, and I told you about the central personae, Kirati and Kiravan. And uh, they have a child, Pudalvan. Sometimes the Kiravan is married a second time, and that wife is Kama Kirati. And we, with the uh, Kirati, we find other personae, like her confidante that we talked about, called Tori, or her, uh, uh, her mother, Chevili, who is the foster mother, to Kirati, uh, the biological mother of Kirati, Nattai, uh, the father to Kirati, Tandai, and the brother to Kirati, Tannai. Uh, and with the Kiravan, we find his confidant, uh, Pangan, or the charioteer, Pahan. And there are sometimes, you know, Virundu also guests, you know, in the home of Kirati and Kiravan. And there are also some intermediaries called Vayal uh, who take messages between Kirati and Kiravan, uh, like Panan, the musician, Virali, the dance use, uh, Kutan, the actor, Pardini, the songstress, Parpan, the seer, and Arivan, the sage. And there are also Kandor, uh, the bystanders or the onlookers, as you might say. And some of these personae uh, speak and listen, whereas some are only listeners. They never speak at all. Like, for example, the Pahan. In no song, you know, does he ever say anything. Uh, the, uh, by, I mean, the bystanders. 
often. They are just onlookers. And the speech contexts are prescribed for these personae. And these speech contexts are dealt with in three chapters in Tulgapiyam Puruladigaram. Um, now, what is unique about Tine uh, is the kind of familial relationship that you find among humans, nature, and supernature. I just want to illustrate this with the help of a, a song from Nabal Tine. In this song, which, uh, you know, we, I mean, the webinar on Tine earlier, um, you know, the speaker also talked about this song. So you might remember this song. A coastal boy and a girl meet under the shade of an Indian laurel or Pune tree in the sea coast. Much to the surprise of the boy, the girl seems to be disturbed by something or the other. And when the boy wonders what's actually bothering her, the girl begins to narrate an instance that happened when she was a child. And the song, this particular song, is actually the narration of that incident. So when the girl was a child, she was playing in the sea coast with her friends. And as they were playing, they casually buried a laurel seed and forgot all about it. But when the seed sprouted, the girl's mother nursed that sapling, taking extraordinary care of that sapling, feeding it with all the best kinds of food that she can find, sweet milk mixed with honey and so on. One day, the mother told her daughter that the Laurel sister, I mean, Laurel was the girl's sister, I mean, the tree sister, was more special to her than her own human daughter. Now that the girl realizes that she's actually standing in the shade of that particular tree, she's embarrassed to be there any longer. So she turns to her lover and tells him, mm, if you don't mind, uh, we could move away from this tree and find another spot. So that song goes, விளையாடும் ஆயமுடு வெண் மணல் அழுத்தி மறந்தனம் துறந்த காழ்முளை அகைய நெய் பெய் தீம்பால் பெய்தினிது வளர்ப்ப நும்மினும் சிறந்தது நுவை ஆகுமென்று அன்னை கூறினள் புன்னையது சிறப்பே அம்ம நானுதும் நும்முடு நகையே விருந்தின் வானர் விள விளரிசை கடுப்ப வலம்புரி வான்கோடு நரலும் இலங்கு நீர் துறைகளு கொண்க நீ நல்கின் இறைபடு நீழல் பிறவுமார் உளதே அகெய்ன் ஹியர் இஸ் ராமாரிஜன்ஸ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் பிளேயிங் வித் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஒன் டைம் வி ப்ரெஸ்ட் அ ரைட் சீட் இன் டு த ஒயிட் சேண்ட் அண்ட் ஃபார் காட் அபவுட் இட் டில் இட்ஸ் ப்ரௌட் இட் அண்ட் வென் வி நர்ஸ் இட் டென்டர்லி போரிங் ஸ்வீட் மில்க் வித் மெல்ட் பட்டர் மதர் செட் it qualifies as a sister to you and it's much better than you praising this laurel tree so we are embarrassed to laugh with you here o oh, man of the sea show with glittering waters where white conch shells their spirals turning right sound like the soft music of the bards at a feast et if you wish there is plenty of shade elsewhere now beside the coastal tine features in this song it graphically illustrates the soul of the tine the familial relationship between humans and non-humans the identification of the tree as sister uh, to a human is not metaphorical but it's actually the poetic expression of a, a cultural practice you know that has a long tradition in tene societies so um this is the unique feature about tene 
Now, if you uh, look at Tinay, how is this kind of uh, social order possible or what made, you know, this, uh, the Tinay possible? There are some um, principles which probably undergird, you know, these, uh, these Tinay societies. So we can talk about some of those principles. Um, firstly, you know, this is a, an indigenous society. So like the <clears throat> features, the human communities and culture, all of these, you know, are indigenous to the Tinay society. And because it is rooted in place time, it is inseparable from the place where it is located. Therefore, it's not an imported social order from elsewhere. And there are some advantages of, you know, the Tinei society being indigenous because it ensures temporal continuity, proven sustainability, and social acceptance. It also, you know, enables the members of that society to take pride in being part of such a society. And closely related to that principle is the traditionality of Tine. Now, all aspects of Tine social order are somehow connected with conventions, socially acceptable conventions. I mean, socially acceptable in the sense they are kind of safeguarded by the elders, you know, who constitute the assembly of the Tine. So the conventions we might like to think today are, uh, could be constrictive, but uh, they were necessary to bend the individual wills of the members to achieve the common good. Um, we know that they were not really constrictive, but they were actually very creative and productive. If we see how those conventions were used, you know, by the people of those societies. So following these conventions did not mean the proscription of innovation. Innovation was always a possibility. And the best example for that would be the Tine song itself. Because you see all of these 2000 odd songs in the Tine, you know, corpus, they all draw from the same repertoire of conventions, but yet each song, song is different and each composer kind of innovates you know, within the uh, available set of conventions. And um, such a society we know was, must, uh, was really small in its scale. I mean, we have no conclusive evidence to say that the uh, demography of Tine society was such and such, but from certain evidences, you know, we can infer that it was a very small society. For example, one song, you know, tells us that a single blacksmith could make iron implements for seven hamlets. Obviously, such hamlets would have been very thinly populated and the technology of those very small and appropriate to each Tine. The polity of, you know, the governance of the Tine was also small because it was a single chieftain managing the affairs of the village with the help of an assembly uh, called Abe. So the small size of the village was very helpful. It was a, one of the conditions for the sustenance of the moral fiber and the quality of life of you know, these people. Um, yet another very important uh, principle underlying these Tine societies would be um, what I would call integration. Uh, humans with humans, humans with nature, and humans with supernature, a kind of integration, what you know you can call a kind of differentiated ontic continuity. And it ensure, ensured the value of uh, necessary identity without sacrificing uh, difference in all matters concerning humans, nature, and supernature. The continuity was established by love. Uh, kinship, 
the kind of uh, kinship that we found in the Nadal song, uh, social bonding, uh, duties, conventions, and rights. Uh, for example, the continuity did not erase the necessary difference between one agent and the other. Um, humans remain humans and nature is nature. Uh, which, um, so that continuity, you know, resulted from the moral quality of that <clears throat> the continuity and the difference. So it was able to tell, you know, the moral quality of the action because, you know, the difference was also sort of ensured. Though a chieftain was a scion of a clan, uh, the board uh, often uh, acknowledged the, the uniqueness of that particular board, though the board, you know, celebrated the common qualities like generosity or the uh, great genealogy of that particular uh, chieftain. Uh, in this song, you know, from you know, we find the continuity between humans and the non-humans, a continuity which did not compromise the difference between the two. And such a, a, a difference was essential for the preservation of biodiversity in nature and the diversity in culture also. And uh, the difference between humans and nature was also essential to legitimize the reverence the supernature called for. And uh, such integration or continuity did not you know, rule out uh, the uh, custom of borrowing. There was borrowing from one tenet borrowed from the other tenet. Sometimes you know, this comes under the uh, concept called tenet mayakam. And that I, um, did not uh, erase the identity of a tine. So this borrowal was controlled actually. And it was controlled especially by the elders of the tine. And that helped maintain the integrity of each tine. And last of all, the most important uh, um, principle uh, which sustained the tine society was what I would call value orientation. The most important value, of course, was anbu or love, which was based on inbam, porul, and aram. Now, inbam loosely translated happiness. And this uh, is true happiness, which derives from virtuous conduct. Of course, there are various shades of happiness and there are various terms for it. But the kind of uh, inbam that undergirds the tine as a kind of ethical principle is virtuous conduct. In the song that we discussed, you know, the Kriti, uh, I mean, the um, female uh, central persona is not happy when she learns that she's standing next to her tree sister during her courtship. And she's likely to be happy when her boyfriend respects her uh, sentiment and when they both move away from the shade of that particular tree to some other tree. And uh, the value purul, which means substance or wealth. Um, now that is again, you know, has to be understood in the light of morality. It has to be earned ethically. Now in the Kurinji Tane song, Chengalam Badakwanda that we discussed, we found that the girl rejected the particular purul, the gift that the lover brought to her. She rejected it for a greater good, namely her marriage. So the temporary rejection of purul, such as gift, is likely to persuade the lad to decide to marry the girl. So that greater good of marriage is what actually legitimizes the rejection of the purul. So she would rather reject such a gift, a puru, than accept it. And, you know, enjoy the kind of pleasure that comes from accepting that gift. And the third important value is uh, aram or morality. In the Kurinji song again, Chengaram Bada Kondra, the ethicality of the girl is evident in her rejection, you know, as we said, you know, in the temporary pleasure. 
which you know that acceptance of the gift might bring and in the nadal song we see the decorum which the girl insists on the decorum of not standing beside you know one's own sister when one is courting her boyfriend so all of these you know values are absolutely essential uh to for the sustenance of tine and this is how you know uh, the tine was sustained um so to kind of uh, sum up you know we can say um we discuss you know various aspects of uh, tine song and said that the conventions are supremely important when it comes to tine and they constituted you know the tine basically and without a familiarity with the tinai conventions we cannot really appreciate the tinai song we need to know about the place time we need to know about the natural cultural features the primary action all of those which pertain to the tinai and all of these are actually part of the tinai conventions and these conventions also associated with the personae particularly the central personae and all of the other personae associated with them in order to find out who is the particular you know speaker in a, a song and who the listener and what is the actual context of that song and all of these you know happen in two domains the home life or aham and in life outside of home or puram and we also you know mentioned the different uh, tinaihir um and the unique a uh, characteristic of each of those uh, tinegal which is the kind of familial bonding you know among humans nature and supernature um so and the also <coughs> important principles which uh, inform and sustain the tinegal so i think uh, i would pause at that point and um we might you know have some discussion i guess um can we proceed with the discussion oh, sure. okay we have a few questions here in the chat box i will read them one by one okay okay um, we have a question from miss richa darwa uh, and that person is a phd scholar at du delhi university so the person asks um so first of all uh, the participant uh, thanks uh, as for the comprehensive lecture thank you for your comp- comprehensive lecture so uh, the question is could you please comment on the impact the tinai conventions have had over the tamil literary tradition for in- instance as in texts like ilango adigals silapadigaram and all okay yeah yeah um thank you very much for that question um well um uh, tinai trad- conventions have influenced um tamil uh, literary compositions throughout the you know uh, millennia until today you know you will find influence of tinai conventions in several of these compositions belonging to different you know forms of verse or whatever genre they are working in so ilango adigals kapiyam also you know uh, uses the I mean though it's it's a a different literary form it's not the kind of literary form that the um composers of the tinai songs used um they were basically working with the meter called asriya but um ilango you know used several verse forms in his text and he was uh, interested in narrating a long you know story um in the uh, you know epic traditions so uh he could not you know follow the conventions like the way the tinai uh, composers did but he does you know make use of the tinai conventions for example if you look at um uh i mean we talked about kurinji right we discussed that now you will find kunja kuravi a separate section in chilapadiyaram which is based on that tinai and you will find the uh, aichir kuravi which is you know very much based on many of the conventions of uh, mullai tinai 
you will find Vetuvavari, another uh, section which is based on the Palaitine. Uh, and if you look at Indira Vedavedutta Kadi, that has a lot to do with Marudantane. So, like this, you know, you will Karnal Vari again, Nadal. So, you'll find all actually, actually all of the Tinegal in um, Ilango's text, but they are not used in the same way as they are in the Tinegal compositions. Okay, sir. The next question is by Mr. Veda. He asks, are, are the Akam Puram counterparts related to each other in some way, thematically, structurally, po poetically, or in other ways? That he asks. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Um, as I said, you know, they kind of complement each other because Akam is about. Um, life uh, that is home-based, you know, life, what you call domestic life, you know, home life. Uh, whereas uh, Puram is about what happens outside. Though very often, you know, we see um, the life, you know, of chieftains, you know, they're challenging each other or, you know, bards praising, you know, the chieftains. Uh, so things of that kind. Uh, so, I mean, um, because um, Sangam songs, as you know, are very much um, real life based uh, songs, unlike uh, many of the other, you know, literary traditions of other um, countries and other states of India and so on. So uh, here, these Puram uh, is the life outside home. So that is the basic kind of relationship between Agam and Puram. Um, what's, you know, home-based and what's just outside of home. So you, you cannot really separate these two, right? Of course, there are uh, different values that are highlighted in this. For example, honor is very much, I mean, as a basic theme in, in Puram, because when, I mean, the life outside of home and you need, everything that you do, you know, has to be honor-oriented. And whereas, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, you should do dishonorable things at home, but then the, that's of course understood. But then uh, the value that is privileged here is love, you know, happiness from love and so on. So enjoying a very peaceful life at home. Um, and there's one song from Ayanguru Nuru, which says, uh, talks about how, you know, the whole family, uh, the, uh, the, uh, father, mother, and the child, you know, are happily lying down and enjoying the bliss of home life, just like, you know, the deer and doe and the fawn uh, lying, you know, under a jasmine bush and enjoying that peace, you know, that's there. So uh, this is the kind of, um, you know, basic correspondence. But then scholars have also pointed out, you know, other correspondences, technical uh, relationships, uh, like Kurunji, you know, is um, basically where the lovers meet and it's where, you know, the lover steals the heart of the, the lover, if you like to put it that way. Uh, and you will find a similar thing happening in its Puram counterpart, you know, called the Betchitine, where the combat is initiated by stealing the cattle of the opponent. Uh, thanks for that, sir. Uh, next question is by Ms. Lata. Uh, she asks, how do we look at the instances battles that we waged because some of one refuses to give his daughter in marriage to a chieftain, Makkal Marudal, and many other acts of violence and conflict within the context of the Sinai society? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, well, Mahir Marutal is uh, part of the Puram, you know, it's part of, uh, it's not really within the Akam uh, conventions, but it comes actually in the uh, Puram uh, life. Um, so there, you know, the basic uh, thing would be honor, like, um, so if the other party, you know, does not really respect the honor of a family, there are conflicts. I mean, if that's honor is not really breached or something, you know, then that kind of, uh, uh, that deal would go through and, you know, the 
a couple would get married. But then if the other party, you know, does not really honor this family, then there is conflict. And this is part of the life of Puram, you know, um, the life in Puram in Tirani society. Uh, so uh, I was really focusing on uh, Akam today because that's the typical, um, uh, that's the, let's say the essence of uh, Tinei, you know, the kind of, uh, that point that I was trying to make about the nature of Tinei as being integrative, you know, so uh, that was my focus. But then we could actually talk about several other things as well in Tinei. Um, uh, yes, um, is that answer complete or? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and I was just asking, uh, have you moved on to the next question? Or is uh -huh. there anything more to add? Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we move on to the next question, sir? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay the next question is by Richard Dawa. And the question asks Could we consider that Agam Tinais, like Perun Tinai, were not considered suitable for representation as the element of acceptable or harmonious integration? Um, that is missing in these denies. Absolutely, yeah, you're right, yeah. Um, so uh, they are, um, you know, considered, um, I mean, Tinegar, but then Tine in the sense, I mean, they don't have any land basis as such, like like the other five Tinegar. So, but yet, you know, you find, uh, um, a couple, you know, in some kind of relationship. So they are not really based on uh, love, you know, the ultimate value that I was uh, talking about. Now, all the five, the five Tinegar, Mullay, Kurinji, Pali, Maradam, and Nadal are based on love, whereas Kaikle and Perindane are not necessarily, you know, love based Tinegar. Uh, so um, they are very different, completely different from, you know, these five. They are mentioned because you do find, you know, instances of that. Um, you know, very often, uh, Kaikle could be a kind of a, a, a starting point of a relationship. You know, it's a thing in which a boy uh, quotes a girl, tries to quote the girl without getting any response from her. Uh, that's why, you know, I called it unrequited, you know, passion. But then, you know, if it ends kind of successfully, then it, you know, probably uh, sort of counts as, Kurinji could become a different one. And then, of course, all of the Kurinji conventions will have to apply that on that condition. Satisfying that condition, then it will be Kurinji. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, the next question is by Mr. Apu Jacob John. And he asks How is the political and personal spheres coexist in the present cultural sphere also? Uh, can you say, say it again? I didn't follow that quite. Okay. And um, uh, Mr. Apu Jacob John wonders how is the political and personal spheres coexist in the present cultural sphere also? Oh. Well, <laughs> talking about the contemporary scenario, I mean, that's an entirely different thing uh, because we are um, more than around, you know, 3,000 years away from this. Uh, society. Uh, well, if you ask me uh, this society, which I would be talking about in my next presentation tomorrow, um, this kind of preceded the state society. So uh, we're talking about something that existed, I mean, which was the predominant kind of social order uh, before the rise of state society, some before some eight to 10,000 years ago. So uh, the sustenance or the continuity of that kind of Akam and Puram life today would be a very, very, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, something that you can never uh, expect to see in today's life. Because as you know, the world has changed a lot. I mean, I, I'm really going to talk about those changes that uh, in the next presentation. So all of these uh, changes uh, in both, you know, the natural sphere as well as in our cultural sphere, have completely, you know, made our life. I mean, it's entirely a different kind of life. Uh, so um, 
that you know agam the understanding of agam in chennai society and understanding of agam and puram in that society may not really apply as such to uh, contemporary life as such i mean you can loosely say well home life and outside home life but then beyond when you go further than that and try to go into the particularities like what really constitutes that home life and what that public life is all about then of course it's entirely different so um we are far away from that you know that's what i can say by way of answer to your question okay thank you sir uh, before the next question there comes a request from one of our participants that uh, mr akshay mohanan he requests that you could you please share the reference material on kenai i think you can share that to our, our email id of the organizing me part of seller and explain sure i will do so that i could share with all the participants their whatsapp sure. address yeah okay so shall we move on to next question sir mm -hmm. okay next question is by ms parvati she wonders if kenai was a form of society can we assume this system of poetic expression changed or declined when the social structure underlying it changed could you speak a little about the decline of kenai and about the socio poetic forms that replaced it uh, yeah uh, as i was telling you you know by way of answer to a previous question this is exactly what i am going to talk about in my next presentation but anyways because you ask and i don't know whether you will be attending the next one uh, session so i would just say this very briefly by way of answer um well with the rise of state society everything changes so we are in a, a very different kind of a state society an industrial society and so uh kenai has changed radically completely though you do find you know traces of that i mean vilangos chalapadigaram uh, that we talked about you know even there you don't find kenai intact as it is you know in the kenai songs uh Chilapadigaram is a product of, you know, a state society. It's not from the primary society at all. So the changes come about. You know, people attribute Chilapadigaram to around second century AD. So you can see, even with around the time of, you know, the beginning of the Christian era, uh, you know, things had changed. Uh, so uh, you will find traces of Tinai in several, you know, texts. As I said in the last. more than 2500 or more years uh, you will find traces of tinai but you will not you know say this is actually the tinai that we find in the tinai songs the person who raised the question uh, so already also added that he will be attending the next session so he could address this tomorrow okay <laughs> so sir gratitude sir next question is by one of our faculty members from the department of english sri shankarajeri university of sanskrit ms dr nisha when go by uh, nisha ma'am wonders that some people were kept out of kinai poetics could you please speak about it uh, well uh, can um, i mean the person who raised the question clarify as to who these people are who are excluded Okay, well, Ms. Nisha, ma'am, can you please unmute your mic and please give me clarification regarding this question? Uh, sir, I think it was the um, uh, uh, certain people belonging to certain groups. I think robbers or something like that. Uh -huh. They were excluded from the Tinai poetics. I remember reading something like that in uh, K. Ramanujan's uh, translation of. poetics the new poetics oh okay. so, because they were not thought to be hmm. um just not thought that they should be included in uh, the new poetics okay just wondering yeah thank you for that why they made this decision yeah well uh, the uh, robbers are kalvar are usually associated with uh, what you call pali the name and as i told you pali is not a permanent the name at all um it's something you know a kind of changed um land area uh, which is in that kind of condition for some time so at that time you know you will find uh, some people um you know turning 
um, I mean, robbers, I mean, who kind of take away, you know, things from uh, people who pass through that, you know, land area. So that has been kind of happening, you know, just like, you know, um, like Perundine, for example, incompatible passion as a Tine. So you find, you know, uh, these things are also in Tine because uh, Tine society is basically a society of humans as well, not just humans, non-humans are also there, but then uh, humans, you know, are capable of all of these foibles and you do see, you know, that sort of thing in Tine society, but then um, Kalbar are very clearly demarcated as Kalbar and the ethical system of the society, you know, um, kind of very clearly identifies them as to who they are and I mean, not as a as a group as such, but then the activity you know of robbing is um, you know is kind of uh, identified for what it is, and it's not really approved of as you know. You know, um, so the ethical criteria apply to all the members of Tene society, whether they follow you know the norms of the society or not. So even when they breach the norms, you know the Tine societies record that and say, well, here is a breach and we know that it's a breach. So I think that's how we need to look at it. Rather than saying that these are excluded groups. I mean, they are not, I wouldn't say they are not part of Tine. They are part of the Tine society, the primal society, but then they are excluded. I mean, they are sort of, um, you know, uh, identified as who they are and their actions are, sort of evaluated for what they are worth. Okay. Mr. Ma'am, is, is that clear? Or do you have any more questions to raise? No, no, no. That's quite sufficient. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma uh, sir, we have completed almost all the questions from the chat box. Uh -huh. um, so, so I think it's a time to conclude uh, so that we can proceed uh, further in the next session. Uh -huh. Okay, as we have no more questions uh, left behind the chat box, um, we are formally concluding the today's session of um, our workshop. Tomorrow we will proceed with the continuation um, or the, the next day we'll be proceeding with the continuation of the session. So um, I request every participants uh, to stay updated with the email so that we will be informing you regarding the updates regarding our next coming sessions. So um, can, let me take this opportunity to share my gratitude for your precious time, sir. Mm, to, uh, so um, uh, we, beneath all the technical glitches we had uh, regarding the host and everyone, uh, it was a um, uh, I, I, what I, why would I say out of the excitement, I'm running out of words. <laughs> Actually, it was Mr. Deebak who was uh, supposed to host today, <laughs> but uh, he just shared uh, this opportunity with me. Mm -hmm. So let me stay, let me please take this opportunity to share my sincere gratitude on behalf of Padasara team um, for, your, uh, for sharing your time and your precious words with us. Um, we look forward for your further sessions and the much informative words that you share and your, the knowledge uh, regarding Tanai poetics. So once again, thank you, sir, for this wonderful uh, session and hoping to see you soon. Thank you very much, Manu, and thanks to Padasala, Sankaracharya University, and Sahipedia for the organizers. And also all the viewers, especially those who raise questions. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you.